Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for logging in and joining us this evening. Um, I see we still have a number of people logging in to uh, the live stream. So I'm going to wait just another minute or two before we begin uh, to make sure we can get as many people logged in for the start of the presentation. Again, thank you for joining us this evening, and we'll get started in just a minute or two. Good evening again, and welcome to our rising ninth grade presentation this evening. Uh, my name is Kevin McMahon, and I'm excited to welcome you uh, to tonight's event uh, as we start the journey for our newest Wolverines, our rising ninth grade class of 2026. While we look forward to welcoming you to campus very soon, uh, we wanted to be sure we were able to share with you important information regarding course selection and academic advising. Um, and so we're uh, really happy that you could log in and join us this evening. Um, just to share, if at some point you do need to log off and can't stay for the entire presentation, you can revisit the link that brought you to tonight's presentation uh, on my YouTube channel, and the recording of tonight's event will be there to go back um, and reference, as well as uh, many resources on our West Potomac website, which I will talk about in a few moments. Um, but before we get into information, I would like to introduce our principal, Ms. Millard, who would also like to welcome you this evening. Good evening, Ms. Millard. Hi, Mr. McMahon, and oh my gosh, hello, rising ninth grade parents. Okay, first and foremost, I want you to breathe. I want you to ooh-saw. It is okay. Your baby is coming to high school. I know it has felt like the time you were holding them and cradling them right after they were born, and then boom, now they're in ninth grade and they're in high school. And we are super, super excited about them coming. And tonight is really about downloading. It's a lot of information. But I don't want you to get worried because we are going to be walking you and your children through the process. 
This is my fifth year uh, at West Potomac as the proud principal. Um, I love my school. I love my community. Um, we are amazing here. Your kids are going to find a, a home, uh, a second home to, to you all. But one of the things that I like to say all the time, at the end of the day, it village to raise children. And we do, as this school, feel like we are part of helping you raise your babies. And so we want to start tonight with looking at the future and their, their courses and, and the process that we'll use to welcome them to high school. But I really want to give the message of don't worry. First of all, they're going to be fine. They're going to be able to adjust and find their place at, at West Potomac, and they're going to do great in the things that they decide to choose to be a part of. They get really excited about the fact that they have a lot of choices. And so what we're here to do is to really help kids and you work together to sort of narrow what those choices will be like and, and find the places where kids want to try something new and want to stretch their skills and their abilities. That is exactly what high school is about. And yes, it is about getting them prepared for the future. So we definitely have courses that we're going to encourage kids to take and require kids to take. But we really want them to feel and you to feel safe with the conversations with us and the ability to really tailor make your child's experience at West Potomac. We are so large, but that, that size is actually a gift. It gives us the ability to have many offerings and things for our kiddos to do and to support you while they are making this transition. Bottom line is the last two years, can nothing get worse, right? And you nurtured your babies through half of or a third of their, their sixth grade year virtually, seventh grade virtually, and now they're uh, eighth graders back in school. These kids, I'm telling you, they are the most resilient group that we've ever been, had the pleasure to work with. It's unfortunate that they've had to deal with all the things that they've dealt with and are still dealing with, but as a result, they are bounce back kiddos and we will be able to support them coming into next year. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Mr. McMahon, but thank you, thank you, thank you for being here tonight. And we are super excited to welcome you. Let's go Wolverine. Awesome, thank you so much, Ms. Millard. So we will go ahead and get into our presentation. Um, we did some introductions. Uh, again, my name is Kevin McMahon and I'm the Director of Student Services. Um, I'm finishing up my eighth year as the Director of Student Services at West Potomac. And I was actually a school counselor at West Potomac for five years prior to that. Um, so I'm really excited to share this information with you. I, I love being a part of this uh, school and school community and uh, just, Really excited to welcome you this evening as well as uh, to see you on campus very soon. Ms. Millard shared a, a, a few words, uh, and so we will get to tonight's presentation. So an overview for this evening, um, we're gonna share graduation requirements for the class of 2026. That's something that we always start with academic advising each year with all of our students, uh, because it's really important we're thinking about those requirements uh, as we prepare uh, to select courses. We're gonna learn about the 2022-2023 academic advising and course selection process. Uh, we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you how to select classes online, if that's something uh, to make sure everybody's familiar with how to do that, and identify where a number of resources are located uh, to help you navigate that selection. And then just finish with important information regarding upcoming events, uh, and, and certain dates related to the academic advising process. So to review graduation requirements, you can visit our online course catalog on the West Potomac Virtual Curriculum website. Uh, I'm gonna have the link up here in a moment on a, a slide uh, that's, that's coming up soon. Um, so uh, that'll be, uh, That'll be where you want to go to review the requirements. You can see the images on the screen where we can, when you get into that course catalog, you click requirements and then you go to 2018, 19 and beyond. Uh, if you've had a student already come through West Potomac, uh, you may re remember that there have been years where we've had multiple different graduation requirements for students in the building. Uh, 
Uh, we are now in a place where all of our current West Potomac students, as well as our rising ninth graders, all have the same graduation requirements. So uh, for those that, of you that might have a current West Potomac student, uh, the requirements for your rising ninth grader are going to be the same as your current student. So there are two types of diplomas. Uh, first, we have our standard diploma. You can see on the screen uh, the, the subject areas on the left, the standard credits column and the verified credits column. Now the standard credits refer to uh, when you take a class, you pass a class, you earn a standard credit. Verified credits refer to the SOLs uh, at the end of the course for certain classes. So 22 standard credits are required for the standard diploma and five verified credits, meaning five SOLs uh, for the standard diploma. I do wanna highlight at the bottom of the screen, uh, the, the last two uh, on the list, uh, these are really check boxes, not credits earned. So for example, AP Honors or Career Tech Education Credential, once a student earns one of those or participates in one of those, they earn a check for that requirement. The same goes for our first aid, CPR, and AD training. That is part of PE9. And so once a student successfully participates that in that in their PE9 class, that checkbox will be marked off. The second type of diploma is the advanced studies diploma. And on this screen, we highlight in red the differences between the standard diploma and the advanced studies diploma. You can see four years of math, science, and social studies are required for the advanced studies diploma. And if I scroll back briefly, um, you can see that the, they were only three required for math, science, and social studies. There's also a world language requirement. So that, and that requirement can be met with three years of one language or two years of two different languages. So for example, a student can meet that world language requirement by taking Spanish one, two, and three, or taking Latin one, Latin two, and French one, and French two. We also have those check boxes at the bottom that I referenced in the standard diploma. Those are still there with the advanced studies diploma. So for the, to earn this diploma, there are 26 standard credits. Again, you earn a standard credit when you pass a class and then five SOLs, five verified credits. Just highlight uh, the classes that you can take SOLs. The two verified credits for uh, English are earned, uh, are, excuse me, are aligned, those SOLs, reading and writing are aligned with 11th grade English classes. So uh, a ninth and 10th grader won't have any English SOLs. Um, math, uh, we have SOLs are offered in Algebra 1 and Geometry as well as Algebra 2. Um, science and biology, chemistry and geosystems. And then uh, social studies, uh, we have the one verified credit. Um, those are uh, SOLs in those classes, world one, world two and US history. And um, you'll learn more about that next year on how those SOLs are administered. So what is academic advising? when there's a freeze on chain making any changes. Um, and the reason we have freezes during this process is where you can't make any changes is because we take all the data of courses that are selected by our students. And then we, uh, Ms. Millard works with our department chairs, our admin team, myself, and we work to make staffing decisions uh, at the end of March and early April so that we can begin making sure that the school is fully staffed and hired uh, to teach all the classes that our students wanna take. In September, there is no guarantee of any class changes. So it's really important uh, that you take your time, you, you think about what classes you might wanna take, but, uh, think about other things that might be going a part of the school year next year. So you select the right amount of rigor um, going into next school year. So let's talk about some resources for this uh, that we provide and, and make sure that our students and our families have to make the best decisions possible. Certainly, we encourage conversations with teachers and school counselors. Now, uh, the way our schedule, uh, I work closely with the uh, Director of Student Services at Sandberg, and the way our schedule came together this year is we actually begin meeting with our Sandberg 
rising ninth grade Wolverines tomorrow, January 12th. There'll be five West Potomac counselors down at Sandburg working with our Sandburg uh, counselors uh, to begin those meetings through PE8. Um, we recognize that you're getting this information today and certainly can't talk to all teachers or get feedback from teachers, or maybe even have all the conversations you want to as a family um, before those meetings start tomorrow. Um, please know that as we go through the meetings over the next four and five days, uh, changes can be made in the coming weeks. You can actually make changes all the way through uh, March 11th. So just because we have some initial decisions that we're gonna make over the next few days, that doesn't mean we wanna continue those conversations, get feedback from teachers um, and, and think about those classes so that we can update them before March 11th, if, if needed. Um, so that's when we'll be making the initial course selection uh, during this January, beginning tomorrow through next week. Um, if a student is absent or uh, um, for some reason misses the appointment with their school counselor, uh, then that's okay. And a Sandberg counselor will be following up with them to make sure we get those course requests. I just wanna highlight, uh, our process, um, every student, when they sit down with the counselors to select classes, they're gonna have both a middle school counselor that has the familiarity of their courses, what the, how they're doing right now, as well as the high school counselor who has the expertise of the high school classes, um, uh, the offerings, what those classes entail. Both of them are gonna be at the table as, for each student uh, during those meetings uh, through PE8. Um, and I think that's a really uh, neat thing that we do, something that's uh, really important to have both lenses at the table to support students and make sure that they are making the best decisions, certainly in collaboration with their families. I do want to highlight that um, I know I've been mentioning uh, focusing on the meetings with our Sandberg uh, students because that is our primary feeder school, but I do want to highlight that there could be some uh, families listening uh, to tonight's presentation that are coming from other schools, um, maybe some private schools. And I did want to highlight that uh, we're going to be registering, uh, having registration appointments the week of March 7th. Um, uh, you are welcome to begin contacting Leslie Dorsey, our school registrar, who can begin scheduling those appointments. Uh, please know that uh, whether uh, a student selects their classes tomorrow or they select their classes on March 11th, um, they're, they're the equal uh, opportunity to get those courses going into next year. Uh, there's no priority in uh, schedule, selecting your classes earlier. All the data goes into the system. And then after March 11th, I'll pull all that data and we go to staffing to make decisions on classes. The second part of the slide highlights our, our virtual curriculum uh, fair website. And um, that is on our West Potomac website right now. Uh, you can go to our West Potomac website and many of the re resources that I'm going to reference for our ninth graders are all, uh, excuse me, not many, all of them are on our West Potomac website for you to begin taking a look at. You can also go directly to the virtual curriculum fair uh, link, uh, which is on this screen. Tonight, uh, had we been in person, we would have started in our auditorium with a presentation, uh, this presentation, and then we would have gone to breakout sessions. And so since we weren't able to do that, since we're not in person, uh, we on our website, those breakout sessions, what would have been shared are recorded by our departments. So when you go to the Curriculum Fair website, you'll see register for classes and you'll see our course catalog, our course offering sheet, as well as steps to select classes in student view. After that, you'll see the presentations that I referenced from English, math, science, social studies, world language, and our advanced academics overview. Uh, I encourage you to take a, some time, whether tonight or in the coming days, to glance uh, for a few minutes at those videos. Our departments put together uh, an overview of just ninth grade information. So uh, these videos by our core departments are meant specifically to help our rising ninth grade families make decisions uh, with their course requests. If you're trying to decide the difference to, between maybe honors English nine and on level English, English nine, or um, what math to take, or 
Um, in science, there's a decision between honors biology, biology, and environmental science. These videos can help you with those decisions. Just going to go back up and briefly mention this course offering sheet. The reason that that's really helpful is it lists all the classes available to ninth graders and their course ID. In a few minutes, I'm going to walk you through the steps on how students select classes in student view. And part of that is knowing the course ID for each class they want to select. And that course offering sheet has each of those IDs listed. So, online course selection. Uh, the way students select classes is by logging into their student view account. On the left side of their account, they're going to see a tab that says course requests, and they're going to click that to get to the area where they select classes. Um, uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to walk, I'm going to walk you through how to do that, as well as there's directions to do that on the West Potomac website. It's really important to remember that course selection can't be done on the student view app. Uh, it's uh, students must log in through a computer, through a laptop, um, uh, and, and access their student view account on a web browser in order to select their classes. After students meet with the school counselors over the coming days, their selections will be locked. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't make changes. That just means that changes must go through the high school alpha counselor. Um, so know that if, if you're child has a meeting tomorrow, um, you know, uh, let's say first class tomorrow of the day, PE8, they meet with the counselor, you go in over the next couple of days and notice you can't make any changes. Uh, don't, that doesn't mean we can't make changes, it just means it's locked in the account and changes need to be sent to the high school alpha counselor. You can identify who your child's counselor is by going to our website, looking at the counselor's uh, contact information and their alphabets are all listed there by last name. Parents and guardians can see course selections throughout this process in the parent view account. Uh, but again, just like with the student view, you must log in through a web browser in order to see the, that information. Um, that is a live look of what's in our system. So if you were to email um, uh, a West Potomac counselor on Friday and um, they maybe get back to you on Monday and say, uh, they, you email them a change and you, they get back to you on Monday and say, change is made. On Tuesday, you can go into your parent view account and see the updated list of classes. This is the one pager posted. I know it's difficult to see on the uh, live stream this evening, but uh, those links I referred to a couple of slides ago, this is one of those, um, uh, one of those links. And it's a really simple one pager on how to select classes in a student view. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just walk you through the steps of that's outlined on that one pager. Um, your child is going to go to their student view account via the link on the screen. So I'm just going to pause for a minute in the event that you're um, maybe following along and want to put that into your uh, web browser now. And then once you get logged in, on the left-hand side, there's this course request button. You're gonna click that course request button, and then you're gonna click the button that says, click here to change course requests. That takes you to a screen where you begin, can begin looking for classes. This is the place where you need those course ID numbers. So again, that course offering sheet I mentioned earlier in the presentation, um, you can take the classes there. Uh, if by chance you are following along and, and in your child, you're, uh, uh, and hopefully we have some students listening to tonight's presentation as well, um, you can uh, type in a course number at the top where it says course ID and search. A good one to start with would be English. And so if you're following along, the English 9 course ID is 113000 is the on-level class, and 113036 is the honors class. So you can go ahead and, and put in the course number. If you select a class and want to take it out, there's the remove button on the left-hand side, which easily allows you to remove 
classes um, from your selections. This is a snapshot of a parent view account. And again, through a web browser, you can see that course request button on the left hand side. So this is what a traditional ninth grade schedule looks like. Um, we have seven classes that can be taken at West Potomac High School, English, social studies, math, science, PE9, a world language or elective, and then that last class is an elective as well. I do wanna mention that uh, some families, when they go into the student view account to look at course selection, uh, might have some classes already selected. Um, for all ninth graders, we've already put PE9 in your course selection because we know all of you need to take it. So that'll show up when you log in. Um, some students, uh, whether it's uh, part of our ESOL program or part of our special education program, have certain courses that are aligned with their plans, their educational plans. And so I go ahead and pre-populate. Um, I gathered information from Sandberg over the course of November, December, and we go ahead and put those classes in the student view account in the course selection in advance to make sure that we get the correct classes selected. Um, it doesn't mean that those can't be changed, but to change those, we want to make sure we have conversations with a number of different people involved, certainly you at home, as well as um, folks in the building. Just wanted to highlight that we are uh, the economics and personal finance requirement at West Potomac for next year will be uh, only offering honors economics and personal finance. Um, but there is multiple ways to earn this EPF requirement, whether it's through the traditional class in the building, uh, AP economics, a self paced economics class after school, or a full online economics, uh, economics and personal finance class. Um, fees do apply with some of the summer options as well as the after school options. Um, but I do want to really emphasize that um, we encourage students to take this later on in their high school career. Um, just kind of going back a slide. There's not a lot of room for electives. Um, we really strongly encourage our rising ninth graders to take a world language. And it really leaves this that one spot for an elective, um, whether that is um, uh, computer uh, graphics, art, um, chorus, band, um, whatever that might be for your child. Our, we have some great CTE classes. Uh, we have some academy classes available for ninth graders. So um, prime, one, because the content uh, is a little bit more focused for uh, students, upperclassmen, um, but two, there's not a lot of room in a ninth grade schedule. So while we did wanna touch, I did wanna touch on economics and personal finance, um, this really isn't a class that we recommend our ninth graders to take. Um, so I wanted to share that information with you. So a few things to do before selecting the classes. As I mentioned at the start, talk with current teachers over the next week, two, to gather feedback. Um, if you get information after you meet with your counselor, that's okay. Again, we can keep making changes uh, through March 11. Certainly have conversations at home about the options. I really wanna highlight our elective videos that are also on our curriculum website. Um, we have a few more that'll be added, uh, but many of our elective videos are up and available if you wanna learn about them. Consider overall workload when selecting seven classes. Um, really, we really wanna emphasize balance. Um, think about if your uh, child uh, might be taking, uh, might be participating in extracurricular activity, whether that's marching band or athletics, trying out for a, a team. Um, maybe they have some responsibilities at home next year. It's important to keep in mind. So thinking about those things is really important as we determine what, how much rigor is gonna be in the schedule. Um, because honors classes do take additional time outside the school day to keep up with the uh, course uh, expectations. And kind of connected to just what I was saying, we really want to emphasize uh, a stu student wellness and uh, making sure everyone's uh, overall wellness is in a good place as we look to next year. Um, we want to, we, we, we know that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the rigor of courses, um, that we want to balance that with our activities and making sure that we're, we can, uh, we're, we're, we're 
doing all we can to support um, our students, uh, our, our Wolverines, uh, you know, and, and our, keep that balance. So a few action items. Uh, certainly tonight, if you have an idea of what classes your, interest, your child's interested in taking, uh, after we finish, you can use the resources provided and go in and select some classes. Um, that would be, you know, great uh, going into the meetings over these next few days. Um, but you may want to continue to review the videos and gather more information, and that's okay too. Um, we talked about seeking feedback. Um, uh, we do want to uh, highlight that uh, honors placements and AP placements, there are two AP classes available to rising ninth graders. Um, those placements are stay uh, for the first half of the first quarter. There are no class changes from honors or AP during the first half of the first quarter. Um, and then after that, if some, if it, we're going to do all we can to help our students be successful in those classes, but if we get into later in October and somebody, a, a child is struggling, we're going to um, make sure that they have all the resources to be successful. Um, or if we need to explore, there is a, a schedule change, advanced academic schedule change packet. But um, those are only changes are only available on space base, space available basis. So again, I just want to share that information up front. Another reason why it's important to gather information from a variety of different places to make the best decisions possible. Uh, we're going to submit any changes over the coming weeks to the high school alphabet counselor. Again, the high school alpha alpha counselor. Um, once a child, once a uh, eighth grader meets with the counselors. All communication about classes moving forward should go to the high school council and then review the many resources we have on our on our website. Here are a few important deadlines as we as we look to the months ahead. Um, I've mentioned that March 11th deadline for any changes um, to the high school counselor. We're going to have a freeze and, and no changes can be made from March 12th to April 15th. That is for us to sit down with our numbers and make our staffing decisions for next school year. In April on the 16th, we'll open things up again to make some changes, but it'll only be on a space available basis as staffing has finished. We've made all those decisions. There will be no changes after May 13th, as at that point we begin uh, really ramping up and finalizing our master schedule for August. So again, I've mentioned these resources a number of times. Uh, we hope that they are, are really helpful uh, as you look to make class selections for next school year. We have our curriculum website um, with an online course catalog, the ninth grade offering sheet that has those, that has that course ID numbers listed, uh, directions on how to select classes in student view, um, and then those counselor meetings that begin tomorrow at Sandberg Middle. The website one more time for you and those different again these videos would have been our breakout sessions had we met in person and those elective video fair videos will, are all posted on the website uh, before i conclude tonight's presentation i did on behalf of mr helmick our director of student activities did want to make a couple reminders um, if your child uh, is planning to participate in marching band or a fall sport, those practices and tryouts start weeks before the school year begins um, in early August, sometimes even uh, August 1st. So um, while those dates aren't officially finalized yet, I do want to share that now um, for Mr. Helmick. He asked me to pass that information along. Um, so as you start making your summer plans, maybe a summer vacation, um, if your child is considering marching band or a fall sport, it's really important you're back in the area um, by early August. Um, high school sports have tryouts and uh, they, students have to be at those tryouts so that the coaches can make decisions on who makes the team. And uh, we want to make sure that anybody who's interested makes, uh, is able to participate in those tryouts. Um, for athletics, there is a number of things that students must take care of in order to be eligible. Uh, for example, a physical uh, dated after May 1st. Um, so if you're, you're considering trying out for one of our fall sports, 
uh, do wait till after May 1st um, uh, to schedule that physical. And then there is specific VHSL paperwork that you must give to the doctor um, to fill out uh, to be eligible. Uh, we have an athlete registration portal, which is really, is really important that students complete. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about that today, but as we get into April and May, June, if you're looking at fall uh, participation in athletics, you do want to go into that registration portal and start that process. And more information is available on our westpotomicsports.net website. As questions come up, and we know they will, we, are, we look forward to supporting you and your family and your child um, uh, over the coming weeks and months um, and for the next four years. Um, for right now, the best thing to do would be to reach out to a West Potomac department chair if it's a content question, or certainly you can reach out to one of our, your child's uh, future school counselor. Um, those websites uh, are, are linked on the slide here. Um, when you go to the departments, the department chair is the first person listed, followed by all of the uh, members of the department. If you're unsure who to contact, that's okay. Feel free to always email me, and if I can't answer the question, I'll make sure I put you in touch with the person who can. There's so much to be excited about as we look to next year. Um, uh, I look forward to uh, our August orientation, where we have, uh, uh, which will um, is, is be the week before school starts. Um, but I did want to highlight one thing. If, if you've been on campus recently, you've seen that we have a, a, a couple additions to our campus going up. Um, the, we have uh, our, our West Potomac um, capacity enhancement, our additions, one on the back of the building and one on the front of the building. Um, they are uh, going up quick. On the front of the building, we have our uh, expanded uh, cafeteria. Um, and then on the back of the building, we have a new wing that um, has a number of new classes and labs. Uh, and just, I know I'm excited. I hope you are, but uh, we are scheduled to have those finished for next school year. Um, so uh, barring you know, any unforeseen delays, we are, are, are looking forward to all of those being done. Um, so our class of 2026 won't have any construction to navigate on campus. We'll have uh, two beautiful additions to our building. Um, uh, and I know we're all excited about that. Um, so I did wanna just highlight, highlight that as we think about the many different things to be excited about for next school year. So that concludes my presentation tonight. Um, thank you so much for uh, listening and for joining tonight. Again, if you wanna go back and reference anything I shared this evening, you can always go back. Um, uh, shortly after I end tonight's live stream, uh, the uh, recorded presentation will be available. Uh, again, any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, thanks again for listening. Class of 2026, I look forward to meeting you soon. Um, have a great evening. Go Wolverines.